only learn about the academy from experiencing it. A person should come to the academy without expectations, not expecting a certain thing, a, a big dream, something glorious. The first day they throw you right into it. You're not you anymore. You're some kind of number. You're basically that so-and-so, and, and you lose all identity. I seem like a completely different person. Okay, one more signature. And I had to think, you know, if this was really what I wanted to commit myself to, and I had to make that decision. unlike any other college or university in the world. It's a four-year experience designed to develop young men and women into leaders. And that experience is as personal as the challenge it represents. A personal commitment to excellence. It's almost impossible to explain what the Academy experience is really like, because it is an experience, a process that takes some of America's top young people and develops their potential. Each experience here is in the form of a challenge, and each challenge teaches you about leadership and about yourself. The first challenge all new cadets face is basic cadet training. It's an instant and complete transition from civilian life. You're building a new identity this first summer. Everyone starts out the same. The same haircuts, the same uniforms. What you were in high school really doesn't matter. It's what you're doing now that begins to teach you who you really are. Basic Cadet Training, or BCT, is a boot camp that lasts six weeks. It's designed to train you mentally and physically to be a cadet. And it's an introduction into military life. There's drill, physical conditioning, and pressure. They try to teach you three things in your first year at the academy. They try to teach you a respect for authority, a sense of duty, and self-discipline. Upper-class cadets run the training. They're tough, but they have a job to do to prepare you to be a cadet. Poor Tug. Turn around. Did you two check each other off? Yes, no, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. It's good. Two got to work together. Don't let it touch the red. Don't let it touch the red at all. Set the can up. Don't let, don't let it touch the red. The Leadership Reaction Course is the new cadet's first chance to practice leadership firsthand. Solving problems. Working together. And the 1,500 cadets who were individuals just a few weeks ago are becoming a class. Long logs that are next. A team. Long logs that are next. Make sure log next. Oh. <laughs> 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 
There's a special kind of pride that develops here. Okay. A class unity, an esprit de corps that becomes more important than individual pride. Okay. The obstacle course is a really tough course. It's about seven or eight minutes of as hard as work you're ever going to do. We've got 14 obstacles here, plus a lot of running. There's no way you're going to get through this course unless you have the proper attitude to get through it. It's self-discipline and pride is what I'm saying. Mom, Mrs. Long, I don't hear anything from you. You gentlemen better speed up. This is only obstacle number three. You have 11 more to accomplish. Air Force! You Thornhill taking a blow. Get off my wall. Air Force! Drop off Thornhill, get out of here! You think you're not gonna make it. And you keep going. And you're about to fall down and you just push yourself through. You better move like lightning. Why don't you growl? Oh. Growling could sound like a little kitty cat. Get moving out of here! Halfway through the course, there's a thing called Get Hill. So you just kind of get it up and you find something inside of you that you've never found before that you didn't think was there. Finding that something inside yourself that you didn't think was there is what the basic summer is all about. And I was so tired and I kept going and I thought I'd never finish. classmates stand along the finish line cheering us on after they finished and it gives you a real feeling of pride that, that you've done something. You feel like you're part of a class. The first part of the summer is over. But there's only three weeks left to develop the self-discipline, knowledge, and physical stamina you'll need for acceptance by the cadet wing in August. So virtually every minute is spent in training. But there are a few moments to just relax, to get by yourself and maybe write a letter home. It's also a chance to get to know your classmates. I got my, I can with my mouth. Here's having lots of fun. <laughs> Girls everywhere. It's like it's like Hollywood. Palm Beach. The sun's always shining, never rain. There's also some moments of pure excitement, like your first ride in an Air Force jet. You can't describe it, it's like you're sitting on top of the world and then the pilot will take it off and let you fly it and you're in control of this big Air Force jet. You feel really great inside. You do aileron roll and dives and everything and you're pulling four G's and everything and your stomach sitting in the bottom of your seat. It's, it's a good time. The second part of the summer is spent in a field encampment called Jack's Valley. It's here that all basic cadets find a new series of experiences and challenges, like the five-story confidence course. We make them go through these courses, and they find after they've finished them that it was something that they could do. The academy is, is definitely not for everyone. You have to be able to adapt yourself to the North Head lifestyle. Learn to accept things that you weren't able to accept before. You'll be doing things this summer you never imagined you'd be doing, or even could do. But every day you can feel yourself growing stronger, becoming more self-confident. You will sound off the loud thunders for condo. Is that clear? Yes, sir. It's a tough program. It's designed to be that way. There are no parents, no boy or girlfriends to help pull you through. You have to want to make it all on your own. And everyone can make it. The key is simply always trying your hardest. 
But you've got to come here with the feeling that no matter what happens, I'm not going to let myself down. And I'm going to try to prove to myself what I can do. Bayonet assault course is one of the roughest tests of the basic summer. Simulating the pressures of a battle situation. The assault course is as stressful mentally as it is physically. But it's a productive kind of stress. The kind that makes you stretch your limits. That makes you realize your full potential. I think that's when you start knowing that that man that's inside of you, the, the thing that they're trying to build is coming out. It's tough, demanding, exhausting, exhilarating, and suddenly it's over. Six weeks of the most intensive training to be found anywhere. And through it all emerges an individual who's a lot different from the high school graduate who arrived only six weeks ago. Acceptance Day and the shoulder boards of fourth class cadets. It's a special moment of pride. During the whole thing, you've been being hassled and yelled at told you were no good, and finally somebody comes up to you, shakes your hand, and says you did a good job, and pins a pair of boards on you. And that's is what I was striving for, was to get those boards. It's the end of one challenge, and the beginning of four years of many new ones. But you've developed the abilities to meet these two. The self-confidence, self-discipline, and commitment to do your best. Cadets graduate from the academy with a Bachelor of Science degree in any one of more than 20 majors. It's a unique educational experience. For like other universities, the academy strives to produce scholars and athletes. But not just scholars and athletes. The educational process here is designed for the development of Air Force officers. Officers that will need a solid foundation in many academic disciplines for their varied careers in the complex and very technical Air Force. Everybody buy that? Okay, now suppose we want to go out further on the X-axis. All cadets participate in the core curriculum. It's an intensive balance between engineering, sciences, humanities, and military studies. Our multi-paragraph essay has it changed any in its format. So if you take the same piece of paper and bring it up close put it in the path of the beam. The academic standards are very high. Academy graduates lead the nation in NCAA scholarships. And despite the institution's young age, the Academy has been in the top five universities in the country in producing Rhodes Scholars. Academics present another challenge and another pressure. Cadets who received appointments because of high grades in high school soon find themselves competing with everyone else who got here for exactly the same reasons. Okay, Mr. Redder, you see we have the specimen in there already with the load on. If you'll increase the load now, we can see some more fringes coming in. If we were to rotate the analyzer now, we'd be going to light field, and we'd have half-order fringes. I think it's just the general rounding out of a person. The more varied the things, the more you can learn about yourself. I think that's a main consideration when you're going to be a leader in the Air Force. Gentlemen, this morning we're going to talk about the measurement of lift and drag and how lift and drag vary with angle of attack. In order to demonstrate uh, these effects, we're going to use the 12-inch tunnel with uh, the model we have in here. That's a McDonnell Douglas F-15. And we'll also be using a smoke tunnel. So let's close up the tunnel and turn it on. As in almost everything at the Academy, the education stresses the practical as well as the theoretical. Most cadets go on to flight training after graduation, so cadet programs are generally geared toward flying careers. Senior cadets who are physically qualified are given the opportunity to learn to fly in the T-41 flight training program.
football and fall go together at any university. But the spirit that the cadets show for all athletic competition is something really special, especially when playing a close rival like Navy. All academy teams play a national schedule, and they do very well. And when the team wins on the field, it's the whole cadet wing that wins. An important facet in any educational process is the facilities that the students get to use. Cadets gain invaluable hands-on experience with the most modern, state-of-the-art equipment and technologies available. Classes are small, ranging from seven or eight students to no more than 20. And the instructors themselves are a subject. And the idea is to teach the subject something about his body. There you go. Okay, now we're the instructors at the academy here are all Air Force officers, with very few exceptions. They teach more than simply the numbers. They teach how to be an Air Force okay, officer. Sure. Now, when you, run out of, when you run out of cards, it's going to go to warp. Now, what was the problem? The Academy has been called a leadership laboratory, where cadets learn leadership by practicing it. By the time you're a first class and a senior, you're responsible for running the wing. Well, it really develops you because you've got to make the decisions. We learn how to make decisions, and the responsibility comes right back to you. The military training system lasts throughout the freshman year. The emphasis is on positive motivation, but the pressure and rigid discipline continue. But it's all done for a purpose. And the purpose here is that we're trying to produce, produce good officers. And a good officer can handle himself in all kinds of situations. That's, that's what we're trying to get into guys. We're just trying to work them up to their potential and say, hey, you can do more. You know, discipline the guy. Get out and do a good job at whatever it is he sets out to do. So the first and fourth best of the United States Civil Rights Academy has laid a foundation early to that spirit for the development of those qualities, character, and discipline which the aspect of him is an officer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The purpose of the fourth best of the United States Civil Rights Academy is to lay a foundation early to that career for the development of those characters. Nelson, not so much as ask you, the fourth classman, just to know a few simple things. Can't you think under pressure, Nelson? Yes, sir. Come on, come on, come on George. Come on, George. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Stress. You'll find it everywhere at the academy, in the military, academic, and athletic sides of cadet life. It's the same thing we talked about. But it's teaching you some invaluable lessons. when you've got that ball. You got to make your own break in this game. Gentlemen, you may remember that Plato, in the Apology, has Socrates saying, "The unexamined life is not worth living." I would say to you that perhaps we should note that the unexamined ideal is not worth dying for. Confucius, you may have noticed, had said that to see what is right and not do it is cowardice. Isn't it remarkable? To be a leader in an uncertain future takes an inner strength, a strength of spirit that develops here at the academy through a code of ethics and a code of honor. A personal sense of integrity, of duty, and of service to country. It can be very lonely as a cadet. The pressures are constant and you're never really done with studying. An awful lot is expected of you and the pace never lets up. You can't afford to fall behind. Your freshman year is something special. It's something you'll never forget. It's depressing. It's happy. There's good times, bad times. You have to have the self-discipline to, to force yourself to go harder and harder, even when you want to give up. At the academy here, you will be sitting here a lot. You will, you will spend a lot of time at the academy because it demands a lot of time. You will not be taking off every night of the week. As a matter of fact, you might count the number of times on one hand you'll be getting out each month for the first year. Almost every spare minute is used for studying. The social life is restrictive for everybody. 
but it's one of the sacrifices you have to make to be a cadet. But there are some breaks, and cadets somehow do find a way to date. Dances in the Cadet Social Center offer one opportunity. Dances aren't all as formal as the traditional Christmas ball. Well, maybe not all that traditional. In addition, cadets can join in more than 60 cadet clubs. From hot air ballooning to photography and debate, cadet activities cover a whole spectrum of interests. <music> Athletics is another major program at the academy. All cadets participate in either intramural or intercollegiate athletics. The intramural program includes 40 teams and 16 sports. Men's and women's teams compete nationwide in more than 20 intercollegiate sports. Colorado is famous for its skiing, and the Cadet Ski Club is one of the most popular cadet activities. Athletics are an important part in the development of leaders, and the academy athletic programs and facilities are second to none. The academy offers many unique and varied programs to cadets, like one of the only free fall parachute schools in the world. The parachute team has been very successful in the intercollegiate championships. And additionally, team members serve as instructors in the summer training program. The educational process continues year-round at the academy, though the summer training programs offer a completely different type of education. Again, the stress is on practical leadership experiences. Cadets serve as instructors in courses in water and field survival, parachuting, and soaring. Okay. No plane off final! Okay, controls. I think the best things and the most uh, thrilling things that have been here at the Academy have been the summers and the summer programs. Um, Open! Our first summer Open. here was uh, survival Back. training. My second summer here was jumping out of airplanes. My third summer here was learning how to fly airplanes. Learning how to fly was uh, probably the ultimate trip, and there's nothing that will ever compare to uh, that first solo. Realizing that uh, these are the only guys when I get the plane back on the ground. And as soon as I lifted off the runway, and I knew I was airborne, because I was so happy that now I was solo, I was all alone, and I, I had the most confidence I've ever had. The first solo, whether it be in a sailplane, a parachute jump, or the assault course in Jacks Valley. These are the moments that best sum up the Academy experience. The challenge of being on your own and knowing you can meet the challenge. And that's a special kind of flight. A freedom of spirit that only comes from a personal commitment to be the best you can be.
I was I was really I was really excited about the whole thing. And I just said that was that was the greatest thing that I'd done. It's a place that it makes you proud because of all that you've had to go through to get to where you're at. Well, when I came here, uh, I was looking for a challenge. And I got it. I got a physical challenge. I got a mental challenge. I got a challenge to me as an individual. And when I graduate at the end of four years, I'll know that I'll have met the challenge. I will have worked up to uh, probably just about the limits of my potential. I'm committed to excellence. Graduation and the commission as an Air Force Second Lieutenant. Like every other challenge you've met here, graduation marks the beginning of yet another challenge. The challenge of a future as an Air Force officer. A future of service, leadership, and commitment. And that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which you are about to enter to help you God. A gentleman of your business. The Air Force Academy demands unique personal sacrifices, but it also offers unique personal rewards, like making it through one of the toughest schools in the country, and that special sense of reaching your full potential. Demands and sacrifices of a personal commitment to excellence aren't for everyone. But if the challenge, opportunities, and rewards of the Air Force Academy are for you, write to the Cadet Registrar, United States Air Force Academy, Colorado.